In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this procedural sandstone material in Blender. Now, if you'd like to purchase the tutorial files, then you can get that over on my Gumroad store, and also my Patreons will have access to the project files. So if you'd like to check out my Gumroad and Patreon, I'll have the links in the description, and that's a really great way to help support me and this channel. And if you'd like to check out more of my procedural materials, then you can check out my Blender procedural material packs, or if you'd like to learn how to create all of my procedural materials, materials, then you can check out my tutorial playlist on YouTube. And then also before we start, I want to give a huge thanks to Sketchfab for sponsoring this video. Upload and preview your own 3D models on Sketchfab. My favorite feature of Sketchfab is that you can preview 3D models online in your browser. You can also purchase models and assets from Sketchfab's model store. You can use the model inspector to preview the wireframe, mat cap, textures, and more before you purchase. You can also apply to sell your own 3D models. Check out Sketchfab with the link below. Now in the 3D space, I just added an icosphere and I subdivided it and then shaded it smooth. And then also for the lighting um, over here in the world settings, I added in this machine shop 021K HDRI and this is from polyhaven.com. So the link is in the description if you'd like to download the same HDRI that I'm using. And then I also added in this mesh object right here and I gave it an emission material to give some nice bright lighting on our object. And if you're using Blender EV, you could also just add a regular light. And then I will also be using the node wrangler add-on in this tutorial so if you don't have that enabled you can just go to blender's preferences and under add-ons you can just search for the node wrangler add-on and just enable that and i'll show you how to use it in the video so let's just add a new material and i can just call this sandstone so i'm going to press shift a and i'm going to search for a musgrave texture so let's just drop the musgrave texture right here and then using the node wrangler add-on if i hold down the control and shift key i can click on nodes to preview them and then i also want to select the musgrave texture and i'm going to press control t again using another feature from the node wrangler and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping now i don't actually need the mapping so i'm going to click on it and then press x to delete it and then i want to use the object coordinates so i'll plug the object into the vector and that'll place the texture around the object more evenly. So on the Musgrave texture, I'm going to turn this detail all the way up to 15 so it has more detail in there. And then I'll turn the dimension down to zero, and you can see when I turn it down, it starts to add all this little grainy detail in there. Now I want to use a different texture to actually distort the placement of this texture. So I'm going to press Shift A, and again I'm going to search for a noise texture, and we're going to drop the noise texture in between the connection of the texture coordinate and the Musgrave. And so what the noise texture is doing is it's distorting the Musgrave texture. And then I'm going to turn the scale up to 6 on the noise, and I'll turn the detail up to 15 so it has lots more detail. And then I'll also turn this roughness value all the way up to 1 so it has a lot more detail. So now if you zoom in here, we just have tons of little detail there in our texture. So let's now take this black and white data, this height value, and we're going to plug that into the base color of our principle, and then I can control shift and click on the principle to preview it. Now that doesn't look anything like sandstone, so I want to press shift A, and I'm going to search for a color ramp, and we're going to drop the color ramp right in here between the musgrave and the principle, and then we can change the colors in the color ramp, and that'll change the colors for the texture. So I'm going to select the black tab, and then right here I can change its color. So I'm going to make it a bit brighter, and then I'm going to make it a brown color. And if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using, I'll show you all of the hex values for these colors. So for this first one, if you click over on the hex value, you can type in 78. 4323. So just kind of a nice brown color. Then I'm going to hold my mouse right about here and I will hold down the control key and click and that is going to add a new tab. And then this one, I also want to be a brown color, so let's make it a brown color, but I want to make it just slightly brighter and also slightly more red. And the hex value for this one is 985126. And then I'm going to do the same thing right around here. So I'll control and click right in here and that'll add a new tab. And then this one, I want to be kind of a peachy color. And I'll bring this one over kind of going towards the orange values, but it's still going to be not super saturated. So more towards the white. And the hex value for this color is a value of F0. 9467. So this is starting to look better, but this is sandstone, so I do want to make it look kind of like sand, so I want to add a yellow value. So on this last one here, this white one, I'm going to click on the color and I'm going to make it a yellowy color. And this yellow color will be pretty saturated, but not super saturated, and a little bit more orange. And the hex value for this one is FF. 
9D44. Now you can see that this material is actually pretty shiny and I don't want it to be that shiny because this is sandstone so it's going to be pretty dry. So I'm going to turn this roughness here, the roughness value, to a 0.7 so it's much less shiny. So that is looking pretty cool but I want to give it some bump because right now the material is still very flat. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to give it some bump to make it look like there's little bits of sand. So to do that I'll press shift A and I'm going to search for the Voronoi texture and I'll drop the Voronoi down here and then again I want to plug the object up to the vector on the Voronoi. Then to preview what this is looking like I can control shift and click on the Voronoi. And you can see this Voronoi texture has a bunch of little dots kind of randomly placed around so we're going to use this to look like little bits of sand. Now I want to turn the scale up to something really high like a 300. So now if you zoom in really close you can see there's just little bits of sand and that looks quite nice. So now I want to put this into the normal. So what I'm going to do is take the distance value and I'm going to put that into the normal. Now this is black and white data but this needs to be normal data. So if I control shift and click on it you can see there's some shading issues and that's because we haven't converted this to normal data. So to convert this black and white data to normal data I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for the bump node. Now we're going to drop this bump node right in here between the distance and the normal. And then what we need to do for this black and white data is we need to take the distance and put that into the height and that'll actually convert it to normal data. So if you zoom in there you can see now it looks like it's bumping out. Now currently it actually looks like the little grains of sand are kind of going back in and I don't really want that so I'm going to click on the invert button and now it looks like it just has a bunch of little dots. And then it is really quite strong right now so I'm going to turn the strength value down to a 0.3 so it's much less strong. And if you zoom out now you can see there's a bunch of surface detail over that material. Now I also want to give it some general noise all over the place and I'll put that through the bump as well. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a another noise texture and let's drop the noise texture down here. And then just like all of these textures I want to put the object into the vector. And then let's control shift and click on the noise texture so that we can preview that. So I'm going to turn the scale up to 15 and then I'll turn the detail all the way up to 15 so it has a bunch of detail. And then I'll also turn the roughness up to 0.6 and you can see adding more roughness gives it a little bit more detail. So I now want to take this bump node and I want to press shift D to duplicate it and I'm going to stick it right in here between the connection. So we now have two bump nodes and the first bump is going into the normal of the second bump. So we now have this other height value that we can add data into. So I'm going to take the factor, this black and white data on the noise texture, and I'm going to plug that up to the height. So if I control shift and click on this bump, you can zoom in here and you can see it's adding a bunch of detail all around. Now I don't want the invert to be turned on, so I'm going to click on this to turn the invert off. And then I can back up here, control shift and click on the principle to preview it. And you can see now there's just a bunch of little noise all around the material. So we are actually almost done, but there's one more thing that I want to do. I want to give it some larger bump. So I just want to give it some more randomness, just some bigger bumps here and there, just to make it a little bit more organic and natural. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for one more noise texture and I'll just drop the noise texture down here. And then just like all the other ones, let's plug the object coordinates up to the vector. And then I can control shift and click on the noise texture to preview it. Now for this last noise texture, I actually don't want very much detail because I'm going to use this noise texture to make the material look a little bit lumpy. So I'm going to turn the detail down to zero. And when I turn the detail down to zero, now you can see that that noise texture is much more smooth. And then I'll also turn the scale up to eight so that there's a little bit more of that texture. So I can now do the same exact thing. So I can plug this noise texture into the bump. So I'm going to take this bump node and I'll press shift D to duplicate and I'm going to drop it right down here. So then the normal can go through the normal. So now we have another height value. So we're going to take the factor from this last noise texture and we're going to plug that into the height. So if I now control shift and click on this, you can see this is what it's doing. So it's adding in some bumps here and there. So let's control shift and click back on the principle to preview that. And you can see that it is a bit too strong. So on this strength right here, I'm going to turn it down to like a 0.15. So now now you can still see it like right here you can definitely see that there's some bumps here and there but it is much more subtle and that is it for the procedural sandstone material so I'll just give this a final render all right and there is the finished rendered material so thank you for watching this tutorial and I hope you found it helpful and again you can purchase the tutorial files on my Gumroad store or you can also get them if you join my patreon 
And you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs if you'd like to purchase more procedural materials, and that is a great way to help support me and this channel. And if you'd like to create more procedural materials, then you can check out my Blender procedural material playlist on YouTube. So thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in a future tutorial.